Don't, don't note to self, don't put that in there. Welcome back to Fade to Black, a film podcast hosted by OMG Studios Philly. Today we're talking about Beyonce's 2016 film Lemonade. Y'all know what that is. The past and the present merge to meet us here. What are you hiding, lovers, as trees? What's up, everybody? What's going on? It's the Fade to Black podcast. It's your boy, David Dunnington, co-host. Oh, Sonny B. Rose. I had to I had to clear my throat. Co-host, oh, founder of OMG Studios Philly, Sonny B. Rose. Today we got another homie of mine of ours. Cinematographer, photographer, Chrissy O'Bell. Chrissy, what's up? Hey. <laughs> we happy to be we happy to be here. Happy to be chatting. Who are you? What do you oh. do? That's what's going on in the Chrissy O'Bell world? Wild. This is a wide range. Um, like you said, photographer, cinematographer. Um, I'm mainly uh, heavy on the photography right now um, and then diving to get more into video production. But um, my main freelance job is working for being a team photographer for the Philadelphia Eagles. And I do a lot of uh, commercial work, commercial portraiture. Um, creative stuff. I love collaborating with um, other creatives to do shoots, um, to do um, film work and all that. Um, I mainly do that in a collaborative space. And then I do, I also do a lot of weddings because people never stop getting married and it's beautiful. It fills my hopeless romantic side. Um, and then <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, it, it's like, <laughs> I feel like my um, photography, cinematography work, the majority of it is like my Sasha Fears, and then Weddings is like, oh, you know, the cute little Beyonce side, you know, her, her little lovey dovey <laughs> side. So like, you know, she got the Sasha Fears, but she also got the regular Beyonce lovey dovey side, you know, going on. Um, <laughs> the two sides of my work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, where can people find like your portfolio or stuff you got going on your instagram your website i am on all the platforms you can find me on instagram at c o b e l so c o b e l l dot co and you can find me and my website is again c o b e l dot co um and those are the yeah that's my instagram and website are the two main places you'll find me your you got some photos on the Eagles Instagram? Yes. Hell yeah. Say it more confidently. You got photos Say on the it. Eagles Instagram? <laughs> yeah, are my photos on the Eagles yes. Instagram? Yes. Then yeah. Oh yes. So uh you can also find my stuff there, but you won't know that it's mine. <laughs> Who cares? You got here working for the birds. Who cares? Oh. Yes. Uh, All right. So it could be a guessing game. <laughs> like, is this is this a favorite like, Chrissy took? Who knows? Yeah, whichever one is your favorite is Chrissy. <laughs> yes. Oh, honestly. Well, <laughs> well. Whichever one has the most artistic eyes. Damn. Talk to them. No, um, Let them know. <laughs> Eagles. <laughs> it's like, um, uh, listen. We're not here to talk about the Eagles and how good they're doing this season and how handsome Jalen Hurts is. We're here to talk about. <laughs> say it say it he is a fine he black is. man yo I'm like okay I'm like no but I'm professional that I'm is professional. professional to say he's a I'm fine black man that's the most professional thing you could say on this podcast yes. anyway so <laughs> we're here to talk about anyway. anyway Chrissy why don't you introduce this film because I know uh, knowing you I know you love this movie so the movie is Lemonade <laughs> The movie is Lemonade. It is, uh, Beyonce said, all you basic bees are out here just creating music videos. I'm going to create a film. I'm going to turn my mm -hmm. album into a film because her work is able to be that cohesive, that well thought out. She is an artist that, like, her albums should not be listened to on shuffle. 
they need to be listened to in order. A lot of, like, and a lot of artists don't, like, really do, I feel like, like, any, a lot of other artists, I can't listen to their albums on shuffle and then not make a difference. But her albums tell a story. And I feel like Lemonade, like, she took it an, an, another step up. She was like, I already know that these albums tell a story, and stories can be told in different ways. So I'm not only going to tell this story via music, but also make a visual, stunning film. And basically, like, it's a bunch of music videos, but they all, like, transition so well that it is, it is, a, that it becomes a film. And, um... Mm-hmm. It's, oh, it's one of her greatest works. I just, like I said, it inspired my thesis. Just the, the storytelling, the, the sound design, the visuals, the everything. She just went off. Also, like, pre-Lemonade, Beyonce did give us Beyonce, which another surprise drop. And I think every single song on that album was a music video. Not necessarily a cohesive piece, but Beyonce said, this is me. I will fully invest in everything that I am here to say. Yeah. I feel like that was like that was like the prequel to Lemonade. Yes. It was like, all right, here's a little taste. But then, because she keeps outdoing herself, she's only in competition with herself. No exactly. one like it's she's literally in a league of her own. Like you cannot compete or you cannot compare. Like no, I feel like the only person <coughs> who can compare isn't who could compare to Beyonce isn't alive. Which is who? Michael Jackson. Um, well, and, I bet you, because if you talk to Beyonce, she would say it's Janet. Um, she's trying to be Janet, and Janet's still here. Mm. I mean, not that she's trying to be Janet, because Beyonce is clearly you know, uh, Beyonce. But yeah, I feel like I've also heard. I've also heard that. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Yes. I've heard from people who have seen like, like famous people who have seen all these people live, like saw Elton John, saw Michael Jackson live, like at their primes and stuff. And they have said that Beyonce was the best live performance they've ever been to, hands down. She's a performer. She just, just I guess, to the compare to Michael Jackson, like people who have, I know there's just been multiple people who have said they've seen Michael Jackson live too, and Beyonce put on the best show they've ever seen. Yeah. So uh, that is yeah. like she might be better than him. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, probably she probably. had. Uh, she had an influence of him to grow from. Like, once you get a blueprint, there's only up. Um, So it's like, all of our experiences of entertainment now are 10 times more heightened than they used to be. Like, even if you think about just like us dancing in middle school, like, had all the line dances, we had the Dougie, we uh, was two-stepping, and uh, what's the genre that we do at cookouts now? The Wild. Oh, the the electric side and the wobble. Um, but now kids just be break dancing. Like um, they're getting sturdy. I don't <laughs> they get full sturdy. on ball culture in the streets, and I'm just like, this is an elevation of <laughs> of dance <laughs> within this generation. Like people were struggling just to jerk, which is running backwards. You know, like yeah, I was so excited <laughs> when I drove the jerk. Skipping, I was like, skipping you backwards. Can't touch me. Oh man, I felt so cool. <laughs> Exactly. It's like Beyonce continuing with her career is truly like a gift because she is only topping herself. There's no reason for her to do this other than because she actually desires to because she has love for the world and wants to like share uh, these new expressions of herself with us Mm -hmm. because she could retire happily. Like like she says, I've got generations built up for the next three of me, you know, like who's that line? She was like, my great grandchildren already rich. Like exactly. Fuck. (laughs) So, so it's like, God bless the young people <laughs> <laughs> for raising artist. the bar. <laughs> okay, she is the bar. Oh, man. That's what I love in Renaissance. Where, like, my, this is what my sister said. She was like, well, like, you thought, like, oh, when you, hear the, when you saw the title, America Has a Problem, that it was going to be like, oh, it's going to be a political thing. But you realize she's saying, no, I'm the problem because I'm just that good. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, these these are these are the facts. I'm a problem. She said, I'm, I'm a like, problem. No. She did that. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me. Before Taylor did. Taylor took that from her, low key. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, she's no, she's um, she is the bar. Mm-hmm. 
So getting back to the lemonade, I wanted to. So it's worth obviously mentioning the what <laughs> what brought lemonade into existence. But you know, here's the thing about uh, the cheating for me is the fact that none of us officially got word that it happened until Lemonade dropped. You know, like you watching the film and you're like, Beyonce, what? Becky, who? And you're going through and you feel all the rage and anger. And then you see Jay-Z's face pop up in the middle of this thing. And and it's in Beyonce's forgiveness era, right? So like, she's cool, but you are just now seeing him for the first time. And it's very much a fuck you, Jay-Z. Like, no, no, I don't understand where Beyonce's coming from. Um, like, how, 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 how did you and your crusty lips cheat on Beyonce? But now, like rewatching it, having, I will never having understand. some space, some time, <laughs> um, <laughs> from this terms. because, because yeah, because like Jay Z even said, like we already did all the healing before we put this out there. You know, mm -hmm. like I was there behind the camera when she's throwing her ring, ring on the ground, um, and that always gets me because I'm like, damn, Jay, you still had to be behind the camera even on her freedom <laughs> videos, but still, um, <laughs> no, definitely you will sit here and watch me do this. That's, right. that's that's because that's what I you deserve to sit there and watch this. That's part of the healing, though. Mm -hmm. And like her even coming out with all of this was a labor of love and healing because her whole thing is that it's not even just about the cheating. It's about the two of us being black people in America and how systemic racism has put us in this uh, mindset that we don't know what it's like to be loved, to receive love, to seek love, to fully express it in a way that like even makes sense to any of us and so like really I'm mad at you because I'm mad at my father and I'm mad at the anger that was boiling inside of him when really that's like white supremacy just fueling into us and so he's telling me I'm supposed to shoot a man like you dog <laughs> my daddy said if a, do if a dude like me comes to town shoot because he's already like I know what's, what's going on yes my daddy and so here you go like she said repeating the blood that has been in my my veins like all these men who keep coming in at 3 a.m <laughs> now you just one of them <laughs> yeah so she was she went off but here, but here her message is still like but jay-z i understand that you don't feel loved because like you still feel like you have to like play these games like you got me and at the same time you like pushing us away because you feel like you don't deserve it mm -hmm. so now i gotta like dig through all my ancestral trauma, dig through all your ancestral trauma to just see you. And then what'd she say? Um, something about, Ooh, I wrote it down. Hold on. Hold on. Mm, she, she has the receipts. Oh, we found the truth beneath your lies, but true love oh, never has to die. Think, come on, Beyonce. She said, Tell once we got to the root of the problem, your lies. There it is. Once we got to the root, I still saw you, you still saw me. Mm. All this trauma that's been keeping us apart, we finally got to start a family together. We got to do better for ourselves so we can do better for these kids, for What's the next generation. I take your broken wings for mine? Mm-hmm. Just like the broken rib pulled out of <laughs> Eve to make, or <laughs> poof from Adam to make Eve. <laughs> I sorry, um, I was like at the end of my senior year in, in high school, and like I remember it was the midst of uh, a lot of racial tension and stuff was coming out, and like I know I I love the uh, reactions that uh, yeah, Buzz, I think it was Buzzfeed that made the video. No, no, somebody made a video of like the day that people that white people found out that Beyonce was black. Yes, <laughs> it was SNL. It was S it was it was one of them comedy sketch people shows whatever platforms. <clears throat> um, I was like, yo, that was everything. But <laughs> it was just like I feel like it was just like fuel to the soul. Mm -hmm. I remember watching and just being just feeling so inspired. I was like, I just I feel like I just got like a download of just inspiration of just the creative inspiration just emotional inspiration because of everything that was happening in real life and because yeah. you said she did touch on so many of um not only like was the cheating a big part of it but it was the institutionalized systematic 
ness of racism and sexism and misogyny and um all that 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 equaled up to this that she was recognizing that it wasn't just this there were so many parts to it and she was highlighting in all these different parts that it just like it just added fuel to also my um activism soul like mm-hmm. I felt like it was it just fueled in so many different ways but um I remember just at the end of it I was like I was just beside myself <laughs> it was like this was just it was just everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel it. Mm-hmm. I'll say, I personally was not even a Beyonce fan before Lemonade. Like, when I say not a Beyonce fan, it's because the Beehive was already, like, active and heavy. I feel like I could not claim a uh, Beyonce fan. Um, plus, I'm not a big pop person. Um, but when Lemonade came out, I, too, saw Beyonce as a Black woman for the first time. I too was shook it. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute now. <laughs> She's doing something totally di- She said, what? Like, I, I only listened to that film um, instead of that, just like listening through the album, I had to listen to the film as I walked to class every day. <laughs> so I'm like, that really like made me lean in because before it was also like, y'all, it sounds like Beyonce's trapped and screaming. Like, is anybody listening? <laughs> um, like, I always think about that Baby Boy uh, music video because her and Sean Paul are not in the same room ever because Jay-Z wouldn't allow them to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you think about, like, watching Cadillac Records and stuff, and it's like, man, Beyonce, it feels <laughs> a little too real, you know? Something's just, there's some truth here. And then when we hit Lemonade, it's like, sister. confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> no, but really, though... And also, like, I think about how much of it was that she needed to build up her career before she felt safe enough to be that Black. Exactly. To be unapologetically that Black. Like, she was like, all right, first she had to put, she had to toe the line between cultures for the longest time and create music that, like, spoke to Black people, but also still could somewhat speak to the whites. Um, Before, like, and then now she was like, all right, I've established, I have a firm foundation. Like, I could retire if I wanted to right now. So I'm at the point, I can do whatever I want. I feel like this was the start of her just really saying, I'm doing whatever I want. I've, I've yeah. done, I built my platform. I know I have the standing. I've, I've proven myself time and time again. I'm doing what I want. I'm experimenting. I'm just going for it. Because like I said, she could retire at that point. So she was like, you know what? I'm, I'm really doing this for me, but also for my people because they need me they don't got nobody else <laughs> like me that's doing this right now hey. for real her. her coming out as Oshun of that water with that baseball bat and she said hold up <laughs> I was like when we all realized that hot sauce was a bat <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> we thought it was a condiment she said they don't love you like I love you she's like I really have to stand up and be the one because like nobody else is gonna do it so fuck Everybody, fuck everything. I'm Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but no facts. Wow, so glad. What's your favorite? What's your favorite segment? What's your favorite segment? My favorite part. Of, my favorite song, or hmm. <sighs> segment of the film. Segment. I would have to say that I loved the scene where she is coming out of whatever that room was that was filled with water. And, like, Mm -hmm. it's saying, like, she, like, how she broke free of that. And, like, there's just, like, water rushing down before her down the stairs. And just, like, the the, those visuals were everything. And, um, and, like, the even, like, the sound design of, like, when from when she was in the water to transitioning to now she's out of it. Um, that like whole situation was like I loved it um and then I feel like I like well what and the other part that inspired that inspired my thesis was when she it was like her Zendaya like uh, mm-hmm. Amanda Stanberg and and like a few more people um were like sitting on the stairs um like like the porch steps and um, it was just like that, like shot of them. And I was like, mm, 
it was like her and like and this like it was like the younger hers almost to and yeah. like all the all these these girls that have been inspired by her career almost um and it was just kind of like gener like little generational john um but i also just i loved that shot mm -hmm. um and, you know, I was also really looking at that Zendaya one because I'm like, she's the only person with braids in right now. Like, everybody else had full froze out. Um, and they were so intricate. I loved it. Um, I would say my favorite section is, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it's the I Ain't Sorry one. Because, like, we start off with the poetry of that Ashes to Ashes, uh, yes, Dust to Side Chicks, like, Beyonce truly burying her problems. <laughs> um <laughs> And then just like hopping in that bus with everybody in this tribal makeup because it's like and she said, "Fuck them. you! I'm gonna have fun with me and my friends." Um, which also, listening to this made me go, "Hmm, did Beyonce write Renaissance now or <laughs> in that secret era where she was truly just doing herself for a while and nobody knew?" Because I'm just hearing some similar vibes and tones and sounds and also just like you know, messaging, um, <laughs> or maybe she like tapped back into that when Renaissance came out, but that moment, because it's her and the girls, her and her tribe, um, walking into this plantation, um, sitting on the master steps on the throne. Um, she got Serena Williams, um, out here just twerking for us. Um, oh, okay. you're like, God damn, <laughs> middle fingers to the <laughs> air, everybody. Everybody. And I'm like, wow, wow. Beyonce's first glimpse of freedom. No. Beautiful. No. Gorgeous. What about you, David? Beyonce's is an admission that it. Yes. All I heard was nigga. <laughs> so Beyonce's <laughs> first mentioning of the word, <laughs> which I believe is in that same section. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Nigga, nah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, and that's I, why she say it real quick, you know? She don't be saying it like that. <laughs> yeah. so, mm -hmm. I also love how much people were upset by her sitting on the drowning cop car. Why? No, just like this, like, just people, so many people were like, how oh, dare she? I'm no, not, not our people, the, the others. I'm, oh, okay, because I'm like, who would, I don't understand. <laughs> no. Um, it was just, I was like, y'all, calm down. Yeah, but no, not our people. Um, but also She in, said, I'm going to go down with the cause, bro. <laughs> okay. But I also loved, I loved um, the Formation music video as well. Like, just because, um, like, I love, the, the, it's the long braids. And every, like, and she was just, like, swinging them joints outside the car as it was going. I said, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Formation's my favorite, too. It's, it's, that's definitely my favorite one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get, like, a Louisiana celebration of life. Um, it's, like, to meet Beyonce jumping off of a building. <laughs> like, she's sitting on the edge of the stage welcoming us in all black. And then by the end, it's a funeral. Um, but the funeral is still like a celebration because it's a time to say like goodbye to the old me. We did that journey. Mm -hmm. Casket closed. We're moving on. Um, it opened more doors. Um, oh, which I just thought because one of the early poems and she's like, oh, closed doors lead to trap doors. <laughs> but here Beyonce is closing a door mm -hmm. and she is no longer trapped. Okay, um, she's free. It's freedom. Exactly. Freedom, freedom. My game of freedom cut me loose. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> uh, freedom, where are you? Because I need freedom too. And she said, I break chains all by myself. Come on. Mm. Hey, I'm going to keep winning because the winner don't quit on themselves. Or is it I'm just so running? Let me not misquote. Hey, I'm going to keep running because the winner yeah, don't, don't quit, quit on themselves. themselves. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Yo, when I tell you, I was like, I want that on the shirt. I need that I need a wallpaper on I need it on the shirt. I need I need that just on my mirror for my daily affirmations. Just I'ma keep running. Cause a winner don't quit on themselves. 
You know, Chrissy, you were creative. You can make that for yourself. Honestly, you know what? Let me let me write this <laughs> on my to-do list. Because you a winner. <laughs> okay, thank you. Put this on my to-do list. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so with our last few moments of uh, our chats, um, I would love to know, um, you know, a lot of this album, as we just said, was about, like, restorative justice, um, about freeing yourself, about, like, moving on to what's next and bigger and better for you, for your people, for the causes that you care about. And so I'm curious, having just watched uh, Lemonade again, it feels like we're inspired. You know, this was an inspiring conversation. Mm -hmm. So what are you inspired to do next? I like, it's inspiring me to like finish, like fully flesh out the ideas that I've already have. Um, Like, so when I first, like, it's the, it's the thing that inspired my thesis and like, I've always wanted to like make a continue continuation of my thesis. Um, Can you and, tell like, us a little bit more about your thesis? Then? Oh yeah, sorry, I keep talking about, but not actually saying what it's about. <laughs> um, so my thesis was the premise of it was is like a personal poetic essay of what it means to be a black woman in America and how I deal with the double entendre of racism and sexism through my relationship my relationship with Jesus through my spirituality um and through and I include like my mom in it I interviewed her um which is nice because I'm like also wanting her perspective because she she didn't grow up with the racism she grew up with classism because she she's from Kenya so she didn't grow up with the same um problems that like me and my sister now have to deal with um Mm. it was it was different for her and so she didn't encounter racism until she was like 20 something and she first came here and then people were telling her to go back to her country and she was like i don't she didn't even want to come to america her parents made her she was like i'm trying and people like go back to your country she's like i'm i'm trying i don't want to be here um so and eventually but she she learned she learned to love it here and that's primarily like when she had me and my sister um that she was like all right i guess we're here <laughs> and she learned to, she like planted her roots and everything but i wanted to like also pull in that perspective and so i loved the parts of my thesis were inspired by like i love how beyonce has like her her voiceover that carries the different segments that really ties all these videos um and, and songs together is like her transitional like voiceovers and so that's what I wanted to include in mine and kind of have that my voiceover be what ties it all together and um and and my inspiration to interview my mom also came from the like the voiceover she had at the end of Lemonade at um was it her grandma's birthday mm-hmm. yeah um I was like, oh, I love that. How she like drew in like the, the previous generations and wisdom from them to like also pay homage to them and what they had to go through for us to be here. So, and I want to, and my mom is also, she's the one that like really inspired my faith um, in Jesus and like seeing how her faith carried her through a lot. And she was brand new to this country her her marriage to my dad was horrible and throughout all that her faith and god never wavered it just grew and that in itself was so inspiring and so i and that's what helped me so i wanted all those things to talk about all those things and have them tied together and also make something that visually was just stunning mm-hmm. and i was like and it was thank you and I was inspired by something my sister said about um, something she said about someone else's film before I had made mine about how like at every point, at any point you could tap pause and it was a still. And like, that's what I wanted for mine. Any point you press pause, it's a still. Mm. Like it's, it's a photograph at any point you press pause. And so like that, and that's what inspired me, uh, to really just also create something visually stunning. That's what Beyonce did. At any point in Lemonade, you can press pause and it's it's a photograph, it's a still. And that's what I wanted for mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. I'll say, just looking at that like uh, movie cover for your film, Chrissy, that's the only reason I came to that whole senior showcase. Um, you had convinced me, so I'm like, oh, good God. And like, what are you about to do? <laughs> yes. And even like that whole thesis, like, I'm someone, I pray over every shoot that I do. And so even in the making of that, it was... It was both inspired by my faith and and blackness, but also at the core of it. Like, and I wanted to include as many black people as I could in it. Like, everyone who's featured obviously is black, and um, the the only person who I had helped me shoot with it was Ralph. Um, I was like, if, if someone's gonna be behind the camera, they're gonna be melanated, um, <laughs> and then. I, yeah, because I just, I wanted it to just be mm, blackly black, black, black from the, from the ground up. And then, um, I did have help from a good, uh, friend, classmate, uh, Kai, what's her name? What's their name? I, I literally suddenly forget their name. Um, I feel so bad. <laughs> I know sorts of okay, but. They greatly helped with editing because it's because it was so personal. It's it's it was like it was harder for me to edit this, and I I'm not a fan of editing films, <laughs> which I don't know if people are like ah oh, she's a fake filmmaker I don't care. Um, don't, me too. <laughs> I, I like I know like people are like but that's where the story's made. I'm like that's where the story's finalized. I don't think this is where it's made. Um, so, but like they greatly helped with just being another set of eyes and tying it all together, especially in the middle of the pandemic. Cause we, we were like, okay, so, so many things I thought I was going to shoot. I can't anymore. So, but we, but I'm like, but we also have enough here that we can make something, but I need another set of eyes to help me. And they greatly helped with that. Yeah. Forget what they were. Original question. Oh, we talked about my thesis. What was inspiring you? What are you inspired to do? Oh, yeah. What was inspired to make? Um, you know, so, so I wanted to then now to continue that and continue to make pieces that so, um, are surrounded by, that are based off of my blackness, the different black experiences, and also my faith and spirituality. Because I also feel like there's there's a lot of um, contradiction, not contradiction, like just like rather like division and um, mm. stuff around like black people and like Christianity, especially and because like it's often like said like, oh, it's like a white man's religion, but it's not because the Bible originated in parts of East Africa that the slave trade never went to. Um, so I was like, y'all like we literally have the receipts <laughs> that say otherwise. And so I'm, I very much also wanted to be touching on that, but I, I don't want to make it the center, but also like touch on that. Um, because that's like such a big contention of mine, especially people are, I feel like, especially like black people think that you, well, not, not a lot, but there are like a select few that are like, how can you be pro black, but also like love Jesus mm -hmm. and like they're not mutually exclusive because <laughs> Jesus also wasn't white and but anyway yeah. side rant <laughs> but that um that's what I want my pieces to be centered around like whenever my personal projects what have you and so I like after we watching that I literally I revisited my old thesis notebook of where all my notes were and then I was like, all right. And I had, I had already started jotting down like a few notes and ideas for how I wanted to continue this, um, make subsequent pieces. And that just inspired me to like, you no, know, really get down to it. Really like, no, let's start to really flesh this out. What do I need to, what do I need to do to make this happen? What do I need to do before, what I, I need to fully flesh out these ideas before I can start shooting. So let's, let's start there and um, build on that. Alrighty.
Thanks again for listening to the Fade to Black podcast. Go on omgstudiosphilly.com for more content from Sunny B. Rose and the gang. You might have noticed that I didn't say a lot this episode, and that's just because the Wi-Fi on my end kept cutting out because Beyonce's internet was like, boy, if you don't let these two women talk. Anyway, good night, y'all.